Hello everybody, I'm Thomas and welcome back to another video. This time I am back with something a little bit different where I will be going over my day at Origins Game Fair. For those of you who don't know, Origins Game Fair is a tabletop gaming convention in Columbus, Ohio, and I spontaneously decided to go for a day this last Saturday. Uh, this was a pretty last minute thing on my end, so to prepare, I went on Board Game Geek, where they have a list of all the games you can buy and demo there. I sorted by games you could demo, sorted by the hottest games, which is which everyone has the most thumbs up, and got the top 25 on my phone by booth number, so I could see how many of those games I could try throughout the day and what I thought of them. So that will be coming later in the video, where I will do a tier list where I will be ranking each game on what I thought. Um, this video will have a couple of parts. I will have timestamps all below. I'm trying to keep this intro short, but the first part after this will just be a brief overview of my day at Origins with some video. Then I will have the tier list. I will have a haul overview and then a little bit of a final conclusion at the end. I don't want this intro going too long, so let's get started. All right, so my day began with picking up my badge, which was nice and quick, and then I hung out in the gaming hall, which was next to the vendor hall, just walking around and seeing what's what. Uh, one thing that I saw set up was this cool Fallout Vault Wasteland Warfare set, which looked really cool. Then I spotted one of the first games on my list, which was Gems of Iridesia. Uh, this was, they were in the middle of a game, so I didn't get like a full rules explanation. I just kind of lingered around and watched them play. But uh, I like the art style on it, but I was glad to find one game. And a little bit later, at 9.59, the exhibit hall opens up and we start making our way inside. Um, definitely not as much of a rush of people and a big crowd as Gen Con, which I am totally fine with. It is a lot more laid back, as you can see. But yeah, I was happy to make my way into the exhibit hall finally and getting a look around. I was pretty impressed by how big it was. Um, started walking around and noticed a familiar game. Slay the Spire had to take a quick pick and made my way to one of the first booths, which was the Cellafair booth that had a life-sized Gloomhaven campaign set up from the Buttons and Bugs scenario. Got a big dice and everything. Really cool. Saw Attack on Titan set up. Of course, I had to take a picture. What a charming and uh, happy game. Look at that. Uh, next up was the Year Zero booth where I spent a good amount of money at because um, I really like these games. There's Forbidden Lands and a whole bunch of other games. Fallout, 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 Fallout. Lots of Fallout stuff here. Found this cool little game, charcuterie board, the game. I didn't look much into it because I was on my way to my next game, which was Adulthood, which is this very charming little game. I actually got to sat down and play, play a few rounds. Made my way over to another game on my list, which was uh, Everstone. I'll pan to the box here. There it is, Everstone. After that, I made my way to the booth that had Boss Monster set up. Got to play actually a good few rounds of this and really get a feel for the game quite fun i did pretty well you know not to brag next up was kalahari the uh, meerkat meerkat yeah game um pretty cool looking game uh take a note of the game set up on the left i will talk about that later next up was chicago 68 i stopped by the booth where they had this set up and got a chance to check out the game and hear a bit what it's about Next, I stopped by the booth that had SETI. Look at this game. It's huge. It just keeps going and going and going. Look at all those tokens and off to the side and all the little cubes and the player boards. This game looks pretty cool. I don't know what's going on with it. And man, does it have a big table presence. Stopped by the booth to play and learn a bit about Little Alchemist, which was a fun little deduction game. Then I spotted this life-sized, large, uh, under falling skies game, which was really cool. There was a couple of like jumbo sized games there. Uh, this was one of them, which I have never actually played the original, but uh, this looked quite fun. 
Next up was stopping by the booth to check out Endeavor Deep Sea, which I really like the art style of, I liked hearing about, I kind of wish I would have had a chance to play it to learn a bit more, but uh, looks like a pretty cool game. I said more jumbo games are coming up and here's another one I spotted jumbo galaxy trucker which once again I kind of wish I knew how to play this so I could have maybe tried it out next up was one game that I really enjoyed learning about chicken fried dice got these cool player boards it's a roll and write has real time and has the top player board with cool actions bottom one can flip over there's the advanced side on the left pretty cool game then i hopped over to cafe barras for this cute little game has really great art has multi-use cards where you're running like a cafe trying to make walk-ins your regulars and you have some goals at the top and it was it was a pretty chill game next up was natura i actually started at this booth but then had to loop back because they didn't have the game fully set up yet uh, this game looks really cool. I like the art style. I like what it's about, the theme. Not huge on area control, but I definitely was impressed by this. Next up was for some lunch, which I actually got breakfast. It was really good, but somehow they managed to mess up toast. Don't know how they do that. Took a little lunch break and then got some coffee. Maybe the best iced latte I've had. Uh, maybe not actually, but it just tasted really good because it was hot. Uh, then I stopped by the... Powerwell booth where I actually checked out this game with these big gumball looking things. I'd passed by the booth a couple of times before and man was this one of the highlights of the con. This game was so cool. The characters, the art was really interesting. The gameplay was unique. I like the unique characters. This one had like a palette that was kind of like the defect from Slay the Spire. The people were super nice. I am so ready to learn more about this game. Um, and look at this familiar game fallout and that's the tabletop rpg i recognize those dice i recognize those character sheets i mean it's no will within vram but hey pretty cool speaking of pretty cool spotted this uh hi-fi game i i don't actually really know what's going on with it i didn't ask but man does it look interesting and unique it looks like the box is also like the the record is like a turn table that you have to use in the game i don't know but it looks cool Speaking of looking cool, look at this great artwork that they had made for this game, which I forget what it's called. I think Welcome to the Moon. No, wait, that's a different game, From the Moon, uh, which has a big table presence. Uh, you got player boards, you have a center area. Didn't really learn much about this game, but I liked looking at the artwork. And finally, last game I checked out was Knights of the Hound Table, this cool little light uh, deck building battle game, which was quite fun. Wasn't super blown away by it, but. All right, it is a little after five. I am just left the convention center. Exhibit hall is open for about another hour. I'm deciding to bail. Uh, I've been walking around since nine. So I guess we'll hop back to what I all got, what my haul is, and then we'll hop into some tier lists to see which games I demoed and what I thought of them. All right, so let's get to the tier list portion of the video. So as you see here, I have my tier list set up. If you've never seen a tier list, just got different tiers, starting at S being the very best, then A, B, C, D being the worst. I do have two kind of custom tiers at the bottom, not enough info and missing in action. So some of these games, I only got to see set up. Some of them, I got an explanation. Some of them, I got to sit down and play. So I will be making this tier list just based off of my impressions of the game, how excited I am to play it again, how excited I am to buy it, kind of my overall kind of excitement for the game is what I would used to describe how I'm going to be ranking these games. So not necessarily if I rank a game in S, you know, that doesn't mean I think this is an S tier game. It's just I am incredibly excited to play more of this game, to buy this game, etc. Um, but yeah, these are the different tier lists and I got all the pictures for all of the games in the order of the board game geek list. And I have also at the bottom added 
uh, two more for two extra games that I demoed that were not on the initial Board Game Geek list. And before I start going through the list, I will quickly say I have the Board Game Geek list pulled up on my other monitor. And what I'll do is I'll kind of read the description they have written, which is normally just like a sentence. Uh, I'll also list out like the player count, the play time, and yeah, just to kind of give you some extra info for each game. So first game on the list was Endeavor Deep Sea. This was the number one hottest game to demo at Origins with 222 thumbs up. It's a one to four player game, plays in 60 to 120 minutes, and its description reads, lead your researched institution to explore ocean depths and publish your findings. So this is a game that was there available to be demo. They had it set up on the table and they had someone explaining the game. So I didn't get to sit down and play it, but I did get a pretty in-depth overview of the game, the round structure, the different goals, etc. Overall, from what I saw, the game looks pretty cool. I like the idea of the different missions. Uh, the, the, the theme is maybe not personally my cup of tea, uh, but I still think it looks pretty interesting. The mechanics look pretty cool. You have uh, like the ocean can be added onto and it can like widen all this and you have your main mission board that has different criteria. This can be played uh, solo and I think cooperatively as well as competitively, which I'm a big fan of having a good amount of game modes. Uh, the, the quality of the components and the art looked good. And the one thing they noted is since this is like a deep sea game, kind of environmental style ish game. Uh, that they noted that the game uses no plastic in it whatsoever. It has a couple of inserts that are made from, I think the lady said it was like sugarcane something. Uh, so it's uh, reusable and recyclable, which is a very cool thing to have. So uh, I guess I'll also note some of the key words they have for the game type is that this is an action point, chaining, environmental, and exploration type game. Overall, from what I saw, looks pretty cool. doesn't have me super excited. I think I would put this in an A tier for sure. Definitely not an S tier excitement, but it looks like a solid game. One that I'll at least uh, look into more, maybe demo again at Gen Con, try to actually sit down and play some. Um, but overall, not a bad game from what I saw. Next up on the list at 143 thumbs up is SETI, which is Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Uh, this is a one to four player game, takes 40 to 160 minutes. Description reads, search for signs of alien life by launching probes and analyzing distant signals. Its uh, tags are end game bonuses, income, science fiction, and space exploration. This was a game they had set up where someone was explaining the game. They also had a table where they were doing demos. Uh, I did not get to actually demo the game. Every time I went by, there was already people playing and it looked like they were in the middle of the game. Um, they had one set up, but the booth was pretty busy, so I never actually got an explanation for this one. Um, I, I, I would have to probably just put it in not enough info. I didn't sit around and watch a demo. I didn't get it explained. I saw the board and I'll post some video of some footage I took of it. Uh, from what I saw though, it looks pretty in depth and I, while I like some space games, I don't know if this one would do it for me. I like the art style, but there was, it's a big board. There's a lot going on. It has a solo mode, which is good, but overall, I mean, I don't have enough info to go off of anything, but from what I saw, I don't know how crazy I'd be about that game. Next up on the list with 111 thumbs up is how to save a world. Uh, one to four players plays in 60 to 90 minutes. Its description reads, work on different projects, each with a razor thin chance of saving a world. Its tags are deck, bag, and pool building, worker placement, science fiction. So this is a game that, from what I remember, was not set up at any booth. I went to their booth, it wasn't there. They didn't have like a version set up either just to explain the game, but there was a separate hall that was like a gaming hall where there were some demos going on and there were demos of this going on. I believe some of these demos were ticketed, meaning you had to like go ahead and advance and place uh, to like buy a ticket for it and sign up online. I don't know if this game was one of them, but every time I went by, there were people playing it and they were like in the middle of a game. Uh, I did stand around and watch a game for a few minutes, like five-ish minutes. It was at the very end of a game. Um, I, I think I would have to put this in not enough info. Uh, compared to SETI though, it did look more interesting. It looked more simple. 
Uh, it seemed like it had a cool theme of like uh, an asteroid's coming towards the planet and people can work on different projects. Definitely didn't have enough info. I didn't really get an explanation. I didn't really know what was fully going on because like I said, people were playing. I wasn't going to start like asking questions. Um, but yeah, I feel like I really just didn't have enough to, to, to properly judge this game. But from what I saw, it looked pretty neat. So I'll, I'll kind of rank them also in this row. So uh, yeah, I would put How to Save a World above SETI. Next up, Cafe Barras with 101 thumbs up. This is a two to four player game, takes 20 to 40 minutes. Subscription reads, build your own cozy cafe and turn your drop your drop-ins into regulars. This is a hand management, multi-use card animal card game. Uh, this game was set up at their booth. I was able to go over, see it, uh, get a little bit of an explanation, do a quick turn of playthrough. And this looked like a very, it was a very charming game. Uh, the art was really well done. And I kind of liked the whole concept of it. It seemed pretty neat um, that you were just, you have different customers and then there's stuff you could do to turn them into regulars. Uh, there's different, I think it was goals at the top. The, the explanation I got was very pretty brief, but um, yeah, it seemed like a pretty charming game, seemed pretty fun. And yeah, um, I'm opening it up real fast. I don't know if I got video, I'll, I'll be posting it on the screen. I think I got some of the, the multi-use cards. It looked pretty cool. Didn't get a full explanation, but from what I saw, I think I would rate this definitely a, at least a B, maybe an A. I put it at a high B. I put it at a high B. Seemed like a charming game. Don't know if it's one I would get, but um, seems like a solid game overall. All right, next up with 91 thumbs up is Mycelia, a one to four player game, 40 to 90 minutes. Its description reads, creation, exp expansion, death and rebirth, build your own fungi kingdom. The tags are grid movement, open drafting, environmental. Uh, this is our first missing in action. I did not see this game anywhere. I did not see it at their booth. I did not see it in the demo hall. I didn't see it set up on a table. I, I saw nothing. So. Unfortunately, not too much to go off of for this game. And speaking of missing in action, next up we have Foundations of Metropolis. I got 77 thumbs up. It's a two to four player game, takes about 60 minutes. Its description reads, create your city of your dreams and the elegant and intuitive city building game with the tags of auction Dutch, income, city building, and economic. This was another game I was looking forward to trying out. I am a sucker for city building games. Anything that has like city building in it, I'm at least gonna check out. Uh, but this one, I couldn't. I didn't see it. It was missing in action. I didn't see a booth that had it set up. They didn't have it going on. I, I don't know. It seems like some booths were rotating games throughout some days. We'll get to probably some examples here soon. Uh, but Foundations, unfortunately, was missing in action. It seems like one that I would like, but I just didn't get a chance to try it. And I should mention, I kind of mentioned this earlier, some of these games might have had like demos going on in completely different areas that you had to sign up for beforehand, but I'm just rating this on, I didn't pre-sign up for anything. Could I go and at least get an explanation of the game or a demo? And at least with that one, I could not. Next up, we have Middle Ages with 69 thumbs up. Uh, it's a two to five player game, it takes about 30 minutes. Its description reads, develop your fiefdom tile by tile to become the wealthiest noble of the kingdom. It's the tags are open drafting, set collection, and medieval, another missing in action. Could not find it. And I went by the booth that this was supposed to be at, didn't see it set up anywhere, didn't see anything about it. So I went up and asked like one of the employees, I'm like, do you have anything about middle ages? And they just kind of stared at me. They're like, uh, no, never even heard of the game. I'm like, Okay, it says online it was supposed to be here, but it's not. So uh, another missing in action, unfortunately. Next up is Layers. It has 63 thumbs up. It is a two-player only game, 30 to 60 minutes. It says build a devious dungeon and explore your rival's creation. Uh, tags are action point, deduction, deduction, and fantasy they have deduction in there twice i guess um this one i will promptly put in not enough information uh there was some demos going on of it i don't think they had it set up at their booth but they had one set up in the demo hall 
but it was it was set up right behind how to save a world and it seemed like it was kind of similar where every time i went by there was people playing and i didn't know if it was ticketed or you have to like sign up for it beforehand because that's what seemed to be the case for those demo hall games so uh yeah layers unfortunately didn't i i really don't even know anything i couldn't even rate it above these two because i don't even know pretty much anything about it seems like a cool concept but didn't even get to see it in action uh, next up is Maki Master, one to four player game. I uh, got 62 thumbs up, become a, oh, sorry, 30 to 60 minutes. This description reads, become a master sushi chef and complete your recipes with style. Uh, the tags are tile placement and territory building. This was a missing in action for me, did not see it. Um, a lot of these were supposed to be at the same booth, like, like Layers, Maki Master. There's a couple other that was all supposed to be at the one booth. They didn't have them there. I think at one point I saw a sign for Maki Master in the ge the gaming hall near the area where they were demoing layers, but I didn't see anybody sitting there playing it. So I don't know if I like caught them like during their lunch break and then they're supposed to come back. But uh, yeah, that one was unfortunately miss missing in action. Next up, we have Mezen with 40 thumbs up, a one to five player game, play time of 30 minutes. Description reads, Northern Craftsman create intricate or ornamental paintings to order. Tags are connections, end game bonuses, abstract strategy, environmental. Uh, this was definitely a not enough info. Um, I went by the booth at one point, they did have it set up, but nobody was there to really give a demo or just talk about the game. So I got to see it set up, but uh, then I didn't get to play it or to get an explanation. And then I went back to the booth later on because some of these I tried to rotate through if there was no one there or if there was too many people there. Um, and, and when I went back, the game was gone. So it seems like some of these were rotating games even throughout the day, not even just day by day. So uh, yeah, Mezen technically wasn't missing in action because I did see it at one point, but then I didn't get any info on it. So yeah. Next up is Vegetable Stock with 38 thumbs up, a two to six player game, 15 to 20 minute play time. Description reads, grow the vegetables, manipulate the market and make a fortune. Tags are commodity speculation, open drafting, card game, economic. This is another missing in action. Didn't see it at the booth, didn't see it in the demo hall. Don't know anything about it. It was missing. Next up is Little Alchemists with 33 thumbs up, a 2-4 player game, 15-30 to 30 minutes. Description reads, Alchemist apprentices brew potions and work on discovering secrets of alchemy. Uh, tags are contracts, deduction, deduction, and fantasy, deduction twice again. Um, this game was set up at the booth. There was someone giving demos. I caught the end of a demo and then hung around and asked some just general questions about the game. Unfortunately, I've not played and I'm not super familiar with Alchemists, which this is just a, I guess, more simplified version of the game. Um, overall though, it seems really neat. I mean, it's a deduction game. It does, It is app assisted. So everybody that's gonna freak out, just chill because it's one of those games that you kind of need an app to play. It wouldn't function without an app. Uh, just because it has like hidden information. It's kind of like Planet X style where it's like you kind of need the app for hidden information and to randomly generate it. But yeah, you're like trying to put different potion like ingredients together to see what that makes and then trying to figure out different information about the ingredients. There's different levels with different complexity. Overall, I mean, I don't think it's a game I would get, but I would put it in the B tier. I think it looked like a very solid game from what I saw. I mean, it seems like Little Alchemist. It seems like it's more intended for children, but... I think it seems like a great game for kids and like I kind of makes me want to try Alchemist now because Little Alchemist seemed kind of fun. And plus I, I like deduction games so I guess that uh, probably is part of it as well. Next up is Metro Runner. 30 thumbs up, 1 to 5 players, 30 to 90 playtime. Description reads, take risky underworld jobs and hack your way into infamy as Mirror City's top runner. The tags are contracts, hand management, size, science, fiction. Metro Runner was missing in action, unfortunately. Did not see anything about it. This is another situation similar to Middle Ages, where didn't see it at the booth, didn't see any mention of it. Though I did go up, and at least they knew the game that I was talking about. I'm like, do you have Metro Runner? They're like, no. Um, I think they did say it's going to either be... It's definitely going to be at Gen Con to play, and I think maybe even at Gen Con to buy. So I wish I had a chance to demo it to know if I want to buy it, but if they have it available at Gen Con to demo, I will probably give it a shot there. 
Next up is Gems of Iridesia, 29 thumbs up. It's a one to four player game, 30 to 90 play time. Uh, description reads, mine and collect gems to craft items and reclaim the throne of an abandoned world. And its tags are dice rolling, end game bonuses, and fantasy. This game, I didn't really see too much. It's going to have to go in the not enough information category. Um, I would probably put it, I don't even know where. I'd probably put it above layers, but this is kind of a weird like ranking because I just didn't get to see it much. This was another game that was in the demo hall, not in like the vendor hall. And it was one that you had to sign up for. So I hung around for like two or three minutes watching a couple people play, but I didn't hear the initial explanation. So I was pretty lost on what was going on. From what I saw of it, I, I don't know how much, the art looks good, but I don't know how much of a fan of the game I would be. Um, it seemed all right, but yeah, for, like I said, I really don't think I have enough information to judge it. Next up is Chicken Fried Dice. 28 thumbs up, two to five player game, 30 to 60 minutes. Description reads, dice chucking and plucking. Uh, tags are contracts, dice rolling, dice, and puzzle. So this game was available at the booth to demo. And man, I was impressed with this game. I went to it. I mean, obviously that's not too much of a description. Didn't know what I was going into. So it is a roll and write style game but it has a couple of really interesting things going on. First off, real time. I love real time. This has real time. I am all about that, especially with a cooking like themed game. Real time just seems to, to make sense. You know, you're trying to serve customers real fast, try to take orders, this and that. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. One thing that's also nice about it is it's a roll and write game, but they have everything laminated. So it's not like when you buy it, you're getting a thick stack of papers. And you gotta reuse them. And no, it comes with markers. It's laminated. It's great. So the player board's also, it's like there's two different parts to it. The bottom part can be, has is two sides. One side is a more family friendly, like, uh, a, like a beginner version. But then once you get familiar with the game, you flip it over to the other side and it's a more advanced style, uh, player board, which is kind of cool. And so it's a cooking game where you have customers and you're trying to give them their order and you have different dice that respond to like different ingredients, I think. Um, and th th then you have this top board that lets you like manipulate dice in a lot of fun in different ways. Like you're in a kitchen, so you can, I think one of them is like, you could toss the dice. So you like check off a box and you can like re-roll it or you can cut the dice or you check off a box if it's a six. Okay, now you got two threes. Uh, so it seemed like really interesting abilities. The game looked really fun. The art looked good. This was a, I would say a highlight of the games I got to get an explanation of and I got to see. Um, it wasn't, there wasn't a full demo, but there was, there was like a se separate area called like the unpub section where they were doing a play test, but I caught them right at the end of like their slot. So I didn't get to actually sit down and really play it. I wish I did though, because it looked really fun. Um, I believe there is a solo mode. I, I'm fairly certain, even though it says two to five players, I was talking to them. That's one thing I remember is there is a solo mode. Uh, so yeah, overall, I would put it in S tier. It's one game that has me really excited. I will be for sure looking out for it because at the end of the day, like there's a lot of rule and rights, but I was still even telling the guy at the booth, like, it seems like this game is doing a lot of interesting and unique things. That's not just like, oh, it's another, you know, rule and right. It has a lot of the combo we feel of Ganshan Clever. It's got a real time aspect. It's got all the fun like dice manipulation with like the kitchen stuff. You have the, the rewritable boards, which I think is cool. So overall, it, it's a game that has me excited and I think it deserves our first S tier. Next up is Super Boss Monster. Got 28 thumbs up, one to four players, 30 minutes play time. Description reads, send your minion to town to lure heroes into your side scrolling dungeon. It's a hand management, open drafting card game, fantasy tagged game. So this is based on a game that is already out. I don't know the name of it because I haven't played it, but this is more of a, like, a sequel game that is, I guess, backwards compatible with the original. Uh, so I, knowing not, not really much about anything about the original game, I wanted to uh, sit down and actually play a good couple of rounds of this game, really get a feel for it. Uh, and it was quite fun. I wasn't sure how, I, I didn't love the art style, but I get what they were going for with the more retro vibes. Uh, it was a pretty, I just played that two player, but it was a pretty fun game where you're building your dungeon and then there's like a building phase, you get some cards, you get to 
add to your room or upgrade your rooms and then you might have spells to mess with your opponent there's like a town area where adventures come in and then you get to try to lure them into your dungeon if you have like the matching treasure types uh it was a lot of fun i quite enjoyed my time playing this i don't know if it's a game i would get it does have a solo mode it's one to four players which is a big bo bonus in my opinion um but i i had a lot of fun playing this so i would put this high a tier i don't know if it's a game i will be purchasing but I had a lot of fun playing it. And uh, yeah, that's what I think of that one. Next up is Adulthood. 25 thumbs up, one to four players, 45 minute play time. Description reads, spend your energy, time, and money to navigate your adult life. The tags are hand management, open drafting, card game, and humor. I did get to sit down and play this for a good amount of time. Good couple of turns, so I always say I got a good proper demo of it. And it was a pretty charming game. Uh, I really liked the art style. It was very simplistic. I took some video, so I'll have that up on the screen now. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was it was pretty, it wasn't the most complex game. Obviously for this type of theme, you wouldn't really expect it. Uh, but I, I kind of liked what it did. So you have a couple of different main resources like out in front, I think it's like happiness and I forget the other main one, but then you also have like, you can gain energy and money to do different actions. Uh, you have like a job, you have like little slots that you have your main actions, but they can upgrade it. So you have like a work slot, but then once you get a card for your profession, you can put that there. Um, you can, it, it looked pretty fun. I only got to play like three ish turns of it, but overall I enjoyed it. The art st style was cool. Where would I put this? I would put it in B tier. Um, I would, I don't know if, the, I don't think I would get this game personally, but I did enjoy my playthrough of it and would at least be willing to try more. Uh, I'd put it right here between Cafe Barros and Little Alchemists. Paradox Initiative, 25 thumbs up, one to four players, 30 to 90 minutes. This description reads, mad scientists steal strands of space time by tile matching their paradox particles. Tags are action points, open drafting, puzzle, and science fiction. <laughs> Missing in action. I have a little bit of drama about this one. So I went to the booth, didn't see it set up. Okay, I, like I said, I kind of did a couple laps around. So I think it was like on my second time looping back, I was like, okay, I'm gonna actually ask someone. I waited to see if they like were rotating games. So I went up to like the one lady at the booth and she's like, oh, no, we don't we don't have that out. And like she's like, well, let me go ask. She, she brought over some other guy and had me talk to him. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, we had it out yesterday. But so and so is so. Yeah, we have another copy of like Honey Buzz set up instead. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, do you, do you have two copies of one game. This is a game you're supposed to have out. Oh, man, I was, I was bummed. The guy was super nice about it. He gave me like his business card. And he's like, you could feel free to email me and tell me, you know, how I ruined your experience, which. You know, he did. That's the only reason I went to was to, to demo Paradox Initiative, and I couldn't. So it was just my whole experience was ruined. The whole day was ruined. Uh, I couldn't get over it. But no, uh, overall, yeah, didn't get to try it. Seemed like a cool box. It seemed like a cool theme. I might have liked it, but uh, I guess some people thought a second copy of Honey Buzz was more important to have out. So there you go. All right, next up is Chicago 68, 24 thumbs up, one to four players, 90 to 180 minutes. Its description reads, compete for the hearts and minds of America at the convention riots of 68. Its tags are action event, area majority influence, political, and war game. This game was set up at the booth in the vendor hall. Uh, I did get to go over, see it set up, and get a bit of an explanation from the guys there. This is not my type of game. I, this is just, I'm not a big history buff. I'm not a big war game. So this is just not my style of game. The art, I will say was pretty interesting looking the cards. It seemed like an interesting theme where it's like you, there's the different factions going on. You have like the, the Democratic National Convention going on in Chicago, I guess in the 60, 68. And you have people trying to influence it. You have like the, the I guess the cops and like the people of Chicago. And then you have like hippies or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I, I guess I don't know much about what this game is referencing. So maybe I can't appreciate what, it, what it's trying to do as much. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be our first D tier. This game is just not for me. Didn't look that appealing. That's just kind of where I land with that one. 
Next up, Buffet Boss, 23 thumbs up, 1 to 5 players, 15 to 20 minutes, description reads, stack your favorite foods in this game of dexterity and light strategy. Tags are open drafting, stacking and balancing, action dexterity. This, unfortunately, was missing in action. I didn't see it anywhere. Some of these games I might have missed, uh, but this, this one was, there was a couple of booths that had like a bunch of games listed and then like none of them were there. And this was one that was, was I think it was like at the Arcane Wonders booth and there were a lot of them that were listed that just weren't there. Um, it seemed like maybe this is a case of their rotating games out. But like I said, I went through at least twice the whole haul uh, to try to go back to games I missed and this one was not there either time. So uh, don't know much about it and uh, don't know if I will. So yeah. Next game is Nature, A New Beginning. 21 thumbs up, 1 to 4 players, 60 to 120 minutes. Description reads, sentient animal tribes explored, take over a post-humanity world. Tags are area, majority influence, closed drafting, animals, and economic. Uh, this was the actual, the first booth I went to. I meant to start on the low numbered booth hall uh, because I want to just go row by row. So I was I meant to start on row like 100. Instead, I started at the wrong end to start on row like 2000, whatever. Uh, and this is one of the first games I saw. I was like, oh, I remember that's from my list. And I went over and they hadn't fully set up the game yet. I chatted with the one guy a bit, came back later and got a full demo. Uh, the both the guys I was talking with there were super, super nice. I believe they're both like the co-designers of the game. I feel bad. I, I should have got people's like titles and names more. I was just so focused on demoing the games. Uh, in this game, the, the board looked really interesting. I'm not big on area majority, but this seemed like a little bit more abstract. It's not as like in depth an area majority game, um, but it seems really interesting. I like the theme. I like the idea. You have the different factions. Sorry, I thought I heard a noise. Uh, you have the different like animal factions. They have different abilities, so they're pretty asymmetric. Um, it seemed pretty cool. I I, I liked what I saw. I want to learn more. I didn't get to fully play it, but I got to sit down for at least like five, 10 minutes and got like an overview of the game, the round structure, stuff like that. And from what I saw, I would say this easily makes my S tier of games that I will be continuing to keep an eye on and maybe purchase in some time in the near future. But this was one that the guys are super nice. The game seemed really fun. I really liked the art on the, the cards, the, the player boards are dual layered. <clears throat> You have a good amount of map randomization with some of like the the tiles and the different like there's four main like outer zones and then you have like an inner zone and the outer zones there's what you're kind of trying to control so you have like military oh god i'm gonna forget some of these like military docks industry and some other one but and then you could try to like get different buildings you could put up settlements there's like bonuses it was really cool i liked what i saw and i am excited to to look into it more Next up was Kalahari, 16 thumbs up, two to four players, 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, description reads, prove the strength of your meerkat family matriarchy by controlling the Kalahari. This is an area majority influence, a dice rolling game, animals and dice. This game was set up at a booth. I was able to go over and get a good explanation of the game. <sighs> this game is just not for me, unfortunately. I'm. It's, it it kind of hits a lot of the stuff that I don't like which i'm not big on area control majority which this seems to have it more than nature which i just talked about uh it's also pretty abstract which i'm not big on abstract games nature theme not really my cup of tea looked fine it had some fun stuff going on with like the the different like meeples you have have different kind of abilities you have different like actions on your player board overall though uh i would have to put it in c tier it's just not one that really excited me at all when i saw the playthrough and, and a little fun fact, but the other thing that was kind of distracting me from this playthrough is they had to set up in the booth and then to the left, they had another game set up called Defrag, which looked really cool. It was like a computer themed card game that was like a spatial puzzle. And I was like, man, what's going on with that game? I'm like, I'm over here demoing this game and then it's got a little meerkat. I want to go see what the computer game's about, which I didn't end up demoing the Defrag game, but I did end up picking it up because it looked cool. It was a one to two player computer game and i just wanted to try it so i haven't tried it yet but I'll, I'll you know we'll come to the channel at some point don't you worry all right only a few more left next we have everstone discovering ignis uh 15 thumbs up one to four players 40 to 120 minutes description reads restore found relics to working condition as efficiently as possible tags are chaining contracts card game fantasy this game i did get to go over 
get a bit of a demo of, get a bit of a rules explanation of, see the board, talk to some of the people at the booth. Uh, and overall, I really liked what I saw. It had really good art. Uh, it seemed like it had some pretty cool concepts going on with it. We have like a player board and then you have different slots of stuff that you can upgrade. So you have like, I forget the exact actions, but you have like an explore action that always does one thing. But then at some point you could like attach a relic to the top. So you have like a bonus action that you do at the beginning. And then you could upgrade the bottom part to like make it do different stuff. And it's a bit of an engine building game as well, because you can start like tucking cards. And then when you do an action, you'll get like extra bonuses. It looked pretty cool. Uh, from what I saw, I, I quite liked it. Um, I wasn't super crazy about it. I would say it definitely goes in the A tier. I would maybe put it below Boss Monster. It, it was something I enjoyed learning about and checking out. Don't know if it's one I would get. I would maybe need to actually like fully sit down and try it to really know. Um, but yeah, that's Everstone. Next up is Go for the Krill. 14 thumbs up, three to six players, 15 to 20 minute play time. Description reads, whales compete to eat the most krill. Will you feast or go hungry? The tags are action sealed bid, action bidding, animals bluffing. Uh, this is unfortunately not enough info. Um, we'll put it right here because I did learn, I, get, I got to learn just a little bit. I caught the brief end of some of someone like giving a rules explanation to some people but and it was set up in one of the demo halls but each time i went by either someone wasn't there or they're already in the middle of a demo and i was just like i just kept having bad timing where i didn't really get torn about it so that's the not enough info category okay and then the final game of the top 25 hot games that were you know supposed to be there uh, is primordial creatures of pandemonium 14 thumbs up, 1 to 4 players, 60 to 120 minutes, traverse the landscape, master energy, tame creatures, and manage your sanctuary. Uh, this game was also missing in action. This game, I think, also listed that the booth was in some separate place that I just forgot to go look. So it might have been there, but just not in the main vendor hall or the side uh, gaming hall. But I didn't see it there, so I don't have too much to really uh, say about it. The last two games I have on here are two extra that I did demo and wanted to talk about. First off is Power Well. I don't have the board game geek stuff, so I'll have to kind of just tell you what this game is about. It is a, I think it's mainly just a 1v1 dueling game. Now, I walked past this booth a couple of times and it caught my eye every time I walked past because in the center between the two player boards, you have this box looking thing that has these big old marbles in it. Uh, if you're familiar with the game Potion Explosion, I think it's kind of similar to that where you have like a little box that has like a row that you have like rows of marbles. You put marbles on the top and it'll kind of like spit them out into the random rows. They're pretty big marbles. They're like bigger than your standard, like almost a gumball size. And every time I walked past, I was like, I don't, I don't like how those marbles look. I don't, I don't know if I would like a game that has just like marbles as like one of the components. I was Every time I saw it, like it caught my eye because it's just like big, like gumball looking things in the middle of this box between the two players. So I, I passed by it and I walked, you know, I did a couple rounds, passed by it again. I think it was after my lunch, I had a coffee, I was doing another walkthrough and I was like, you know what? I saw some people playing it. I was like, let me just stop and watch because I will say that the, the marbles in the center, I was like, I, I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of the idea of that, but I also didn't know what they do. But the other thing that caught my eye was the art. The art looked really cool on the player characters. I also noticed it seemed like they have almost a, a bullet heart style like player board where they have like a part of a unique player board on the left, part of unique stuff on the right, and you have something in the middle. Which I was like, okay, you know, I like bullet heart. That's a dueling game. You know, I like the artwork. I was like, let me stop and watch. So I stopped and watched this demo for these the, the guy demoing and someone some someone else that just walked up and wanted to learn about the game. I watched them play through the game for like. I stood there for at least 10 minutes watching them finish up their game, try and just learn along the way. And I will admit, I was quick to judge this game because after watching it played, I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, the marbles, I still don't know how much of a huge fan I am, but they use them in a unique way uh, where you basically have three different like health pools. You have like your red, your blue, and your yellow, and that's what the colored marbles are. And basically, like, it's a bit of a spatial puzzle where you have, like, a grid of marbles, and if you have, like, a row of four blue, then you can use your four blue ability. Like, each uh, each health 
area also had like different abilities. They're all character specific too, which is really cool. I like character specific stuff. Um, the one guy that was giving the demo was playing as like a hunter type character that was pretty uh, go big or go home strategy. Like didn't have heals, but lots of damage. Uh, the other person was playing this cool artist character. And that was another thing that caught my eyes as I was watching him play. This artist character has this like ability called like their palette where they could take marbles off the little box board and put them onto their palette. And then what's cool is they have other abilities that can use these little marbles on their palette that to do different things. They can like pull them off and trigger them essentially. And the diff different colors have different abilities. And I was like, dang, that's cool. And also that it was reminding me exactly of Slay the Spire's defect character with their orbs. It had a very similar feeling because they have this power to fort slots you could put different colored marbles there and then depending on the color when you like evoke them you get to do different things i was like that's really cool so i watched him play i was like thoroughly entranced just watch i was you know commenting on the game every time like the one guy attacked i was like oh boy you're almost dead um and then afterwards i chatted to the the one fellow there who i forget his name at the moment i do have his business card super nice guy um and i sat around talking i'm like learning about the game and turns out this game is also made, it's a family made game. So it's the guy I was talking to, I believe it's his brother helps. I think their dad might've also been there. And then their sister-in-law is who does the artwork. And she was like at the booth in the back on an iPad doing art right then and there, which is really cool. So it's like, it's a family run thing. And you got the sister-in-law doing art that's made the art for the game. And she's literally at the booth, like in the back doing the art as we spoke. So it was, I thought was really cool. Everybody I talked to there seemed super nice and the game seemed really interesting. Uh, one thing I, of course, had to ask about, I was like, okay, this looks cool. One big thing for me though, it's, I, you know, I'm a solo gamer at heart. That's how I play most of my games is I have a solo mode or a big about doing like any different game modes. And it sounds like they are going to be coming to Game Founder Kickstarter sometime soon. And that's going to be one of the pledge goals is to get a solo mode. So. Hopefully that happens. I think they also have currently like a 2v2 mode planned, which sounds pretty neat. I think this game, I'm glad I stopped. This was the abs, this was uh, definitely the, I don't know, the surprise of the con for me, where I, this wasn't even on my list. I walked by the booth twice thinking, I don't know if I'm, how I'm feeling about that game. And I stopped and I was pretty blown away. The game looked really cool. The people were super nice. The art was great. The, the, the gameplay seemed interesting. You got unique characters. And what's really cool, I'll talk about this um, when I do my little unboxing of my haul, do my haul review here in a minute. Um, as they gave me, and they were handing this out to other people too, a take home demo. I'm like, okay. That's kind of cool, but how does that work? Now get this, the guy I'm talking to, once again, I feel bad, I forget his name, super nice guy. He had made an app that simulates the marble box. So you could put your phone between you and someone else, you play, use this take home demo and you could play the game with the cards that he gave you plus this app, which I thought was the coolest thing. And I really should have asked him more about the app. I was too distracted to ask him about other stuff and we were talking about, because I mentioned to him that I was like, oh, the that one character reminds me of the defect and he mentioned he's like that he said that the defect was an inspiration which i don't know if he was just saying that to make me feel good but um which is which is kind of cool and they also mentioned like monster hunter was an inspiration for that character with like the notes which i'm not super familiar with monster hunter but overall power well definitely got to be the top of the s tier for me i mean that was just the surprise of the con i thoroughly enjoyed what i saw the marbles seem pretty neat. I think I could, I can, I'm warming up to the idea of them, but the, between the character art, the nice, everybody at the booth was super nice. The idea, it's like a family game and just uh, that they're going to do a solo mode at some point. I like a good, you know, battler game. Bullet Heart has quickly become one of my favorite games. So I think this game is for sure top of the top of the list of games that I will be keeping my eye on. I'll be probably kickstarting it whenever that happens, trying to get it a solo mode. And I think this is, if there's any game y'all at home should check out, I think it's power well. Finally, last little game I will talk about real fast is Knights of the Hound Table. This was at the, oh boy, hold on. I'm pulling it up on my other monitor because I don't remember. I should have probably had this set up before. This was at the, 
we ride games booth they also do what was it code dungeon i think is the other game or dungeon dungeon and co um and i just walked past the booth and i saw the games i was like i'll try another game you know it was towards the end of the day i was about to leave i was like i'll i'll, I'll do one more game uh, and it was a deck building card battler which was kind of cool where you have this like set of stack cards each person draws a, like a set amount of cards from that stack and then you uh battle and there's like the standard cards you also have like these i think it's called barracks cards which are like upgraded cards each time you do damage you get what's it's 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 a dog theme game so you get treats whenever you do damage that you can spend to get the like upgraded big cards from the barracks that really boost your deck and pretty much each time all you do is you draw three cards you play one for its attack each card has like a value and an ability so you play one as your attack card that uses the attack value the other you play as a defense card uses the value as your defense value and then the third you use in the middle as your ability and it activates the ability and you just keep you just do that until one person dies um it was a charming game i enjoyed it wasn't crazy about it um but i i thought it was a fun little game i would put this for sure in b tier uh i'd maybe put above little alchemist but wasn't too crazy about it, but I enjoyed my playthrough. I don't know if it's a game I would get, but uh, I thought it was quite fun. And yeah, so that does it for this tier list. So here is all the games, the top 25 hottest games at Origins ranked. As you can see, a lot of them I struck out on. I would say you know, over half the list was either straight up just missing an action. I didn't see them or just not enough info didn't get a chance to demo them or get a full rules explanation but of the ones i saw i mean power well chicken fried dice and nature are for sure my top three power well especially i'm gonna be keeping an eye on that game uh super nice people seems like a super fun game chicken fried dice seems like a really unique roll and write which i'm very excited for nature really cool concept cool theme i like what i saw and i want to learn more and then we have the, uh, you know, the A tier game, Super Boss Monster was a lot of fun. Everstone looked pretty neat. Endeavor Deep Sea looked also pretty neat. Um, I would even maybe put Endeavor above Everstone. Not that Everstone was too bad, but Endeavor looked pretty neat. Cafe Bar, Adulthood, Knights of the Hound Table, Little Alchemist were B tier, so nothing crazy, but I enjoyed my playthrough. Kalahari, pretty lukewarm on, didn't, didn't really seem like my cup of tea. And Chicago 68 was... Uh, are only D, or D tier, which once again, I think that's just not saying it's a bad game. Just my impressions is not, it's not for me. I don't really understand the historical reference for the game. I'm not a big history buff, a war gamer. So this game was just uh, not for me, unfortunately. But yeah, that does it for this little section of the video. So I will real quick hop to my table where I'm going to do a real brief haul overview showing you all the cool stuff I got. All right, so we're here at the table now where I will quickly go over what my haul is, what all the cool things I bought at Origins and also any cool free stuff that I got along the way. So first up is my most expensive purchase. This is something that I was actually gonna purchase fairly recently. I put it off because I think I just forgot to order it. And then luckily they had it there at, Gen at Origins. I almost called it Gen Con uh, and I had to buy it. And that is the Forbidden Lands box set. Oh man, I have really, really been enjoying getting back into this game. I am really glad I have because I forgot how much fun it is. And you know what? Getting the box set, I already have the PDF, but I, I really want the physical book. This is a game I want to play physically in person more. So you know what? That'll be good use for it. And... I know they make cool books for this, and I didn't realize that's what comes in this box is the cool looking player books and game master books. Check this out. I mean, does that not look sweet or what? That is a very cool. You got the the little map on the inside, and it's it's the player book. It's just the player book, but it looks really slick. I really like how this looks big fan big fan i didn't realize that these are the books i've seen these before but i didn't realize these are the ones that come in the box set that was a pleasant surprise game master book as well very similar situation it's got the cool maps in the front and it's just it's the game master guide it's not not too much to really show off there it also includes the 
Legends and Adventures booklet, which I am a huge fan of. But maybe one of my favorite ways to make a character, maybe in any RPG, I really enjoy the idea of how you generate, you know, a backstory, you roll for formidable events, you have a backstory that determines what stats you get, what talents you get. I, I'm a big fan of how you generate a character this and what it all gives you this also has like a random legend generator which is pretty handy it has a monster generator in the back which i haven't used so good stuff uh it also includes the big old map of the forbidden lands which is very very cool uh i mean check this out it's huge i'm not gonna really zoom out but uh it's the same map you know it's the map it's got all the hexes very cool. I believe it's the same on both the front and back, just so you have two different maps to use. I don't think there's any any difference with the maps. Uh, but yeah, good quality map, pretty thick paper. So I don't think it's going to tear easily. It feels like it's good quality. And at the bottom, of course, you got the stickers. You got the stickers to place on the map to do the, the, the thing, uh, which is very cool. So that's what all comes in the Forbidden lands box i am so glad i got this because i was gonna like i said probably purchase it anyway recently but then when i get it through the website would have to pay for shipping would have had to wait for them to ship it so i got this but the reason i got this the main reason i got this was because i went to the free league booth i'm a big fan of free league now um and i was gonna get my original intention was to get something else but they had a deal going on where you spend a certain amount of money you get like i think it was spend over a hundred dollars you get 20 percent off so i was like but my initial reason I went into the booth was to get this. The Dragon Bane starter set. Dragon Bane is a game I've been hearing nothing but good things about, especially for solo. I've been really itching to get into it. It's one game I was planning on getting into here soon um, and getting the box set for anyway. So they had it there. I had to pick it up. So what all comes in it? You get the, stand, the mini uh, little standees for the stand the standees you get the sands for the standees uh and then you get the standees themselves i don't know if this is a hot take i don't it seems like opinions you know are, are pretty just divisive on this whether what's better using a miniature 3d printed character or 2d colored standees like this personally i haven't used these much but i think i prefer these rather than like a 3d printed mini uh, just say so I'm very glad to have all the, the monsters and all the characters comes with a set of dice. I don't, don't plan on really using that treasure cards, the adventure cards, initiative cards are in there. A, I gotta like dump this out to start getting access to some of this stuff. Um, you have the getting started little leaflet, not super important. The rule book, it's just a soft cover rule book, but with all the rules and stuff, it's very cool. Kind of important. Uh, you have the Alone in Deepfall Breach, the little pamphlet for solo play. Very cool. Glad it includes that. A map. Didn't know this is going to include a map, but hey, look at this. Uh, you got a very cool map of the Misty Veil. I like it. Uh, I think the back is, oh yeah, the back is all of the top backers. So there is a lot of people that back to this game didn't realize a uh, nice thing is also comes with a bunch of pre-made characters to to play and some character sheets so you can just you know make your own uh it also has a little terrain map for squares so for battle you can set up got stuff on the back and then it has a very good sized adventure book where i believe it says like there's 11 different adventures that can be played essentially they could be played in any order. You do not need to play all of them. Each could be played as a standalone adventure, I think, except for the last one, uh, which is really cool. I, I like the idea of this and uh, I haven't flipped through it too much, but seems pretty neat. I am very excited to get started in Forbidden Lands and I think this box set will help, though I do think I will be at least like if I play if slash when I play on the channel, uh, I will be probably playing on Foundry because I've heard there's a good Foundry module for this, but you bet that I'll have, you know, my physical book there and um, all that good stuff. Who knows? I mean, I might end up playing it physically instead because I have all this or maybe I'll do both. I don't really know. But yeah, this was by far my biggest purchase of the con was getting both of these, which like I said, I was already probably planning on getting, I was going to get this soon and I wanted to get this at some point. So the fact they were both there and I could get a deal, I just, I had to, I, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, so we'll just set those up there. 
that's fine we'll, we'll keep them on the screen for now uh next up i got two rpgs i got two board games as well so first one i got gloomhaven buttons and bugs i wasn't really planning on getting this but i saw it there it was only 20 bucks which is a pretty good deal it also includes a promo scenario for the con which i was like okay i kind of do want the promo scenario and at the end of the day it's i mean it's a solo only gloomhaven game it's so small i mean look at that i could fit it in my hands i could i could crush it um and at the end of the day i think it's a pretty small investment 20 dollars for a solo only gloomhaven game and plus you know i'm a solo gamer primarily so I want to support solo games and even though i'm not the biggest fan of gloomhaven i got rid of jaws of the lion i suck at the digital version where i can't even get past the first adventure so getting a third copy of gloomhaven may not be the smartest idea but i am excited to try it see how it plays and at the end of the day like i said i kind of just want to support solo gaming and support um whoever i forget the name of the designer is i don't know if it's kip for valens here on the front but one of these where the, the they made buttons and bugs as like a fan creation on board game geek and then cellafair as the company cellafair uh like reached out to them to make it like an actual thing which i think is really cool i mean that's a similar situation to kind of what happened with like jump drive where uh the solo campaign and whatnot was all fan made stuff on board game geek and then the company reached out to make it an official thing so i'm a big fan of you know companies reaching out to fans and up and coming game designers to make their ideas an actual thing so i was like i gotta support it 20 bucks i get a promo scenario and i get it's kind of a novelty item but you know what i'm excited to try it so playthrough of that sometime soon next up is a game that i kind of talked about in my tier list defrag i I didn't know much about this going in. I saw it on display next to Kalahari when I was in the same booth demoing that, and it looked really neat. Uh, it's it's a hand, I think it's described as a hand management spatial puzzle game. Uh, it's computer themed, so I was like, okay, that immediately caught my attention. But also like the art on the cards, it's, it's like Windows like 95, 98, uh, very old Windows style. And I was like, I don't really know what's going on. I wish I would've got a demo with it but it looked really cool and i was like i had to grab it especially they had a a promo pack there so i was like well if i buy it then i got the promo pack so why not and what's cool about the game it's a one to two player game so solo mode love that uh and then also i saw there's a scenario manual so that has like 40 scenarios that you could play some of them you could play solo some of them are co-op some of them are competitive which i'm like that's that's really cool so there's a there's a standard like starting game then there's in the back there's rules to play a full normal game and then you have the scenarios on top i was like i'm not huge on spatial games but look at this it's a floppy disk it's a computer i, I had to i had to get it i had to so that was the other card game i got a couple small promos i picked up just extra little things i got this little glass chicken from the chicken fried dice booth I don't know if I can actually use this in the game or if it's just a little decorative glass chicken in a bag, but you know what? Kind of neat. Uh, when I went by the Powerwell booth, they gave me these cool art cards that on the back also have like QR codes for, I think it was like their website. They have a Discord server as well. I need to hop on that. Uh, but very cool art cards. And it's just a cool way to like give out your QR codes. And then they gave me the... Uh, take home demo which i already kind of gushed about in my tier list but just the idea that they made a take home demo that you download an app for to play the game i think is so cool i haven't actually like tried the demo or really opened the bag yet but i want to try it at some point see how the app plays see how the demo plays but power well man i check it out it looks really fun um and the last little thing i got this candle uh it is from mischief loot i think is the name or it's critical sense is what they what it says on here this is the kits kitsune smells really good um they they had a lot of fun like different scents a lot of them were based on like rpg classes so they had like a cleric one an investigator a barbarian a wizard a sorcerer a dragon's den one a goblin one like all these fun flavors this one just smelled really good so i was like you know what i sit, i sat there and smelled like 10 15 candles probably almost close to all of them uh but this is the one i went with they also had the soaps that went with most candles i didn't i didn't get the body soap 
Um, but yeah, so this is pretty much my entire haul. Oh, wait, one small thing on the ground. I got a nice little reusable free league bag. It's a nice little just fabric bag, a big fan. You know, for how much I spent at that booth, I'm glad I got a little something extra. Um, there were a couple things I want to quickly note that I did not get, but I was so close to buying it. The only reason I didn't buy this stuff was because Gen Con is right around the corner. Uh, there was this one booth that had these really cool handmade ceramic coffee mugs. A lot of them had really cool like pop culture reference or like RPG, like nerdy reference. Uh, the ones I saw, there's a couple really cool Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy ones. Uh, there was one that looked like Marvin the robot that had like a Marvin phrase on the side. Uh, a couple of really great mugs. I was going to buy one, but I already bought a lot of stuff. Um, there was a board game I was going to get, and I do have the little flyer for it. It's called Town Builder Coverdin. Co 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 um, I played it. I got a little demo. I guess I probably should have included it in my tier list. Whoops. Uh, I would probably put it as like an A tier game. I quite enjoyed it. Wasn't anything crazy. It's a town builder. I'm a sucker for town builder. The reason I didn't get it is A, I already gotten a couple stuff. Uh, they did even have a little package. Like a, I think I forget what they call it. Like a con convention package that came with the cards, sleeves for them, and a play mat. And I was like, oh, the play mat they almost got me with. At the end of the day, it seemed like a fun card builder. Didn't seem that innovative didn't seem anything too crazy that i was like oh i need this in my collection like it looked like a fine game but from what i saw i don't know if it's doing anything too revolutionary so that's why i ended up not getting it the last little thing i almost got was uh rune quest they had a starter box for rune quest that i almost picked up i went by the booth i was chatting with one of the guys there super nice guy uh i was just asking you know, questions about rune quest because i don't know much i've heard of it i've looked a little bit into it but i don't know much about it i didn't realize how long it's been around and how like extensive of like materials and supplements they have for it but they have a ton of stuff um and then i made the idiot comment i'm like isn't this the game that mithras is based on which no it is not and the guy politely said no you're an idiot uh he didn't you know say that exactly but he's like no uh but then he, he told me kind of the history of rune quest and how it was like swapped between different companies and then mithras is what it, rune quest is gonna be in this one company but then they traded it back before it was done so i was like learning all the history of that which uh was pretty interesting and i didn't realize that all that history was there so I was so close to picking up RuneQuest, but I was like, I already got two RPGs, so I'm going to wait a little bit, but I think I'm going to pick it up probably at Gen Con. Um, and that's my haul. Like I said, I didn't, you know, I wanted to try not get too much. The RPGs, stuff I was going to get anyway. These two were kind of spur of the moment things, but pretty small games overall. And, the, you know, the candle, I had to at least wanted to get something little, something fun, not super game related. So a, a, a nice candle, I figured, would be uh, the way to go. So that is my haul from Origins Game Fair. All right, I'll quickly hop to Voice Over Thomas, where we will talk quickly about my overall thoughts of the convention before wrapping up here today. And that about does it for this Origins Game Fair video. A uh, quick little couple final thoughts here. Um, like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, this was a last minute decision by me. Um, I genuinely didn't know the convention was going on. I mean, I've heard of this convention. I've never been. Um, but I didn't know it was going on until Thursday of last week when my friend brought it up and asked if I was going, which I was like, no, I didn't know what was going on. So then I ordered my ticket on Friday and then I got my day pass on Saturday for Saturday and went. Uh, so I, it was really a pretty short amount of time I had to prepare, but I really enjoyed going in with the 25 games to demo. Obviously didn't get to demo all of them, but I demoed some really great games, learned about some ones that weren't on the list that were really great, and overall had a great time. I'm really glad I went. Um, obviously, it's not as big as Gen Con. That's a very high bar to set, but just for going for a day, I quite enjoyed it. I will probably make this a yearly thing if I just at least go for a day. I don't know if I would go longer. I think the other thing I would do in the future is uh, A, plan this a little bit more in advance, and then also maybe try to schedule some events. At the very least, try to schedule some demos of some of the demos that actually needed to be scheduled for. Um, but yeah, overall, had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this was a little bit different and a little bit longer than my normal videos, but uh, I had a lot of fun doing this and we'll hopefully do something similar for Gen Con, which is coming up here right around the corner in a little over a month. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I'll see ya.